Today we'll be discussing chapter one of your textbook, Discovering Yourself. And in it, the first concept it introduces is the concept of the first step, which states that truth is a key to mastery. Basically, the first step technique is about telling the truth about who you are and what you want. It's about what kind of student you are and what kind of student you want to become. And it states that success starts with telling the truth about what is working and what is not working in your life right now. It also states that telling the truth is a down-to-earth principle used whenever you want to change your behavior. And it asks you to tell the truth in the same way you would tell a doctor the truth, a lawyer the truth, or the clergy the truth. The fact that you are extremely honest to these three examples is because if you're seeing a doctor, you're going to be completely honest with them because if you have anything, you're going to want to know what you need to do to take care of it. I mean, if you go to a lawyer, he's going to need to know the truth to help you get out of whatever situation that you may be in. So these are just examples of how truthful you need to be during this process. So within the first step is the discovery wheel. And rather than going through this slide, I want to go directly to your textbook so we can discuss the discovery wheel. So the discovery wheel gives you an in-depth opportunity to practice the master-student process, which is the ongoing cycle of discovery, intention, and action. Like many other students, you might find that the discovery wheel to be the most valuable exercise in this book. So this is not a test. There are no trick questions and the answers will have meaning only for you. So here are two suggestions to make this exercise more effective. First, think of it as the beginning of an opportunity to change. And second, lighten up a little, laughter can make self-evaluations a lot more effective. So here's how the discovery reel works. By the end of this exercise, you will have filled in a circle similar to the example. The discovery reel circle is a picture of how you see yourself as a student. The closer the shading comes to the outer edge of the circle, the higher the evaluation of a specific skill. So for example, in figure 1.1, the student has rated her reading skills low and her note-taking skills low. So when we go to the example, we compare the notes, which is here, and the reading. So notes mean the higher the points, the higher the, higher the skill level. The lower the points, the lower the skill level. Okay? So the terms high and low are not meant to reflect judgment. The discovery wheel is not a permanent picture of who you are. It is a picture of how you view your strengths and weaknesses as a student today. To begin this exercise, read the following statements and award yourself points for each one using the point system described here. Then add up your points for the total for each section and shade the discovery wheel in figure two. Now I don't expect you guys uh, to shade this if you don't want to. For you visual learners, if you need to do this, that's perfect. Um, but you can just write the score that you get for each section. And remember, the higher the score, the higher skill that you have in that section. The lower the score, the lower the skill you have in that section. This right here is the point value system. So five points means that this statement is always or almost always true of me. Four points means that this statement is often true of me. Three points means that this statement is true of me about half the time. The two points would say that this statement is seldom true of me. And one point is that this statement is never or almost never true of me. So let's go over this first section, attitude. So you would read the statement, I enjoy learning. And then you would come here, and if this statement is always and almost always true of you, you would put five points here. If it's never true, or almost never, you know, never true, then you would put one point here. And on to the next statement. I understand and apply the concepts of multiple intelligences. Again, you find where you fit within the point scale, you put the point here. When you're done with the section, you'll add the total score. And I want you to do that for every section, and we'll discuss this in class on Thursday. What we will be discussing is not your point score. It's going to be right here. So we're going to discuss the overview, the strengths, and goals that some of you discovered about yourself in the discovery wheel. So back to the PowerPoint.
So learning styles, discovering how you learn. So people have different ways of creating meaning from their experiences and changing their behavior. Learning style is a unique way that we blend thinking, feeling, watching, and doing. And according to psychologist David Kolb, two things happen when we learn. We perceive, which is notice events and take in new experiences, and we process, which is deal with experiences in a way that helps us make sense of it. So instead of going through these few slides, let's just go directly to the textbook because it's a little bit more clearer there. So whenever you want to go within your textbook, you can go back to the table of contents and you can find the topic here. So we learn by perceiving and processing. So when we learn well, says psychologist David Cole, two things happen. First, we perceive, that is, we notice events and take in new experience. Second, we process and we deal with experiences in a way that helps us make sense of them. So some people especially prefer to perceive things through feeling, also called concrete experience. They look to absorb information through the five senses. They learn by getting directly involved in new experiences. When solving problems, they rely on intuition as much as intellect. These people typically function well in unstructured classes that allow them to take initiative. Other people like to perceive by thinking, also called abstract conceptualization. They take in information best when they think about it as a subject separate from themselves. They analyze, intellect, intellectualize, and create theories. Often these people take a scientific approach to problem solving and excel in traditional classrooms. Some people prefer to process by watching, also called reflective observation. They prefer to stand back, watch what's going on, and think about it. They consider several points of view as they attempt to make sense of things and generate many ideas about how something happens. They value patience, good judgment, and a thorough approach to learning. And finally, other people like to process by doing, also called active experimentation. They prefer to jump in and start doing things immediately. These people do not mind taking risks as they attempt to make sense of things. This helps them learn. They are also orientated, oriented and look for practical ways to apply what they have learned. So perceiving and process an example. So suppose you get a new cell phone. It has all these new features that any phone that you've never used before. Um, you have many options for learning how to use it. So, for example, you can just get your hands on the phone right away and press some buttons and see whether you can dial the phone number, send text message, access the apps, you know, play with the phone with your hands and just try to figure it out. Or you can read the instructions, the instruction manual and view help screens on the phone before you can try to make any calls. Uh, you could also recall experiences you've had with the phone in the past and what you've learned by watching other people use their cell phone. And finally, you can ask a friend who owns the same type of phone to coach you as you experiment with making calls and sending messages. So all these actions illustrate the different approaches to learning. Getting your hands on it and playing with your phone is feeling, which is the concrete experience. Reading the manual and different help screens would be through thinking, which is an abstract conceptualization. Recalling what you've experienced in the past, an example of learning through watching or reflective observation. And asking a friend for help and, a, and somewhat coaching you on hands-on activity is active experimentation. So in summary, your learning style is in a unique way that you blend thinking, feeling, watching, and doing. You tend to use this approach in learning anything. Reading the next few articles, so yeah. So that's basically what it's meant when we say that we perceive and process information. So next, there are four modes of learning. These four modes learn are feeling, watching, thinking, and doing, like we just spoke. Let me see here if I want to... Nope. So yeah, back to the power mode. So becoming a flexible learner. So benefits from becoming a flexible learner. You can sell, excel in different courses. You can expand your options in choosing a career. You can work with people who learn differently from you. And you can be able to learn from instructors no matter how they teach. 
So being smart. Being smart, does being smart mean having an IQ and being successful? Well, according to the psychologists, IQ do not always foretell academic or future success. Howard Gardner of, the Harvard, of Harvard University believes that no single measure of intelligence can tell how smart we are. And according to Gardner, intelligence is the ability to solve problems or to create products that are valued within one or more cultural settings. So multiple intelligence. Since we're on that subject, really quick, written assignment one has to do with multiple intelligence. So make sure that you read up on multiple intelligence in your textbook as well before doing this assignment. So back to multiple intelligence. So there's verbal linguistic, which is the communicator. There's mathemat mathematical logical, which is the organizer. There's visual spatial, which is the artist. And there's music rhythmic, and which is the sound lover. So the communicator enjoys writing, letters, stories, papers, takes excellent notes from textbooks and lectures, highlights and underlines, and probably will, you know, would do good in different careers such as English teacher, editor, journalist, lawyer, uh, librarian, television, television announcer. As far as the, the organizer, this person wants to know the how and why things work. They look for patterns, they convert text into charts, tables, and graphs. And careers that typical the organizer would have is an accountant, auditor, a computer programmer, an economist, a math or science teacher. So the artist likes to draw pictures, to give examples, assemble things from illustrated instructions. They create concept maps when taking notes. They focus by sketching and drawing. And some careers for artists are an architect, um, engineer, graphic designer, interior decorator, photographer. So the sound lover, um, they sing in the car, or the shower, they play musical instruments, they relate to key concepts, concepts to songs that they may know, uh, end up being musicians, teacher, a music therapist. The next set is bodily kinesthetic de dexterity. Then there's intrapersonal independent. Then there's interpersonal people's person. And then there's the naturalist relationship to nature. So for the bodily kinesthetic dexterity, they tend not to sit still for a long period of times and enjoy working with their hands. They carry material with you, study in different locations, and they create hands-on activities. And different careers would be actors, athlete, coach, dancer, teacher, chiropractor. As far as intrapersonal independent, they enjoy writing uh, in a journal, being alone, prefer to work individually. They connect course to their personal values and goals. They connect the lecture to their personal and past experiences. Um, that could be a free ri freelance writer, owner of a home-based business. As far as interpersonal, uh, the people's person is plenty of friends and spend time with them. They prefer talking and listening over reading and writing. They create flashcards and use them to take quiz um, like with a study partner, volunteer to give speeches, or lead a group presentation. Um, they could end up working as a counselor, a manager, a nurse, a school administrator, or a teacher. And lastly is the naturalist relationship to nature. Enjoy being outdoor. Uh, insight occurred during time spent in nature. Post pictures of outdoor scenes where you, you study. Um, this could be a biologist, a construction worker, an environmental activist, a park ranger, and a recre recreational supervisor. So once you do this assignment, you're gonna learn about yourself of where you may fall in one of these categories, which there's eight of them. So all eight are distinct areas of intelligence. All eight, um, each person possesses all eight intelligence and each intelligence can be found, uh, can be more fully developed. So this is just basically what we went over that chart. So the verbal linguistic focuses on the use of language and words, interest in English and foreign language, interest activities such as debate, drama, and yearbook editing. And these are common career choices, author, lawyer, teacher, sales, punch, and religious leader. 
as far as music again it's focused on the ability to be on the ability to be aware of patterns of pitch sound rhythm and timber um, interest in subjects such as music and dance interest in activities such as band orchestra choir you know common area choices are singer composer dancer conductor sound engineer stuff like that and the next would be the logical uh, mathematical and focuses on ability to think abstractly, problem solving, thinks clear, um, cl critically, um, interest in subjects such as math, science, economics, computer programming, type of activities would be science projects, reading maps, spreadsheets, budgets, and blueprints, and these are the common careers right here. And so on and so forth with visual spacing, bodily kinesthetic, intrapersonal intelligence, interpersonal intelligence, naturalistic intelligence. So now to the back system. I just went over these three these um, slides rather quickly because again we kind of just went over all that information here with these two charts. So just know that there's eight areas of intelligence that we all possess these eight and that we can develop them more fully. So the back system. The theory states that each of us prefer to learn through one of these senses, these sense channels, and that we can also enrich our learning with activities that draw on other channels. So let's see the textbook. The back system is here. So another way to approach the topic of learning style is with a simple and powerful system that focuses on your senses and your ability to use language. According to this system, you learn by seeing or visual, hearing or auditory, by using words, which is reading and writing, or by movement, which is kinesthetic learning. So to recall this system, remember the letters VARC, visual, auditory, read and write, kinesthetic. The theory is that each of us prefers to learn in some of these ways more than in others, and we can enrich our learning with activities that draw on all four perspectives. So people with a preference to visual learning are interested in how things look. They are sensitive to shape, color, and design. To understand and explain concepts, they look to see and create drawings, maps, and diagrams. Getting an overview of a topic, the big picture, is, an import, is very important to these learners. Learners with auditory preference enjoy conversation, discussion, and debate. For them, the spoken word matters more than the written word. If they're excited about something they learned in class or at work, they'll tell you all about it in person before sending you an email or a photo. In contrast, reading and writing learners prefer the written word. Their notes will include more paragraphs and lists than drawings and diagrams. While a lecture or discussion might be fine for these learners, they also like to see text-based handouts and web pages that capture the main point and key details. People with a kinesthetic preference um, are more likely to move. They learn by doing, ex by doing and experimenting. When faced with a new idea, they ask, how does this work? How can I use this? They're interested in examples, um, case studies, and exercises that allow them to test the concepts in action. So here's a way to discover your preferences. So to reflect on your own VARC preferences, answer the following questions. Each question has four possible answers. Circle the answers that best describe you, how you would respond in the stated situation. This is not a formal inventory, just a way to prompt some self-discovery. So this you can do on your own by answering all of these questions. And then after answering, you take a few minutes to reflect on the meaning of your responses. All of these answers numbered, numbered one are examples of a visual learner. The twos refer to auditory learner. The threes refer to read and write learning. And the fourth il illustrate kinesthetic learning. Finding a consistent pattern in your answers indicate that you prefer learning through one of these channels more than others. Or you just may find out that your preferences are fairly balanced. So when you approach your class with the VARC system in mind, you can turn even the 
driest subjects into rich multi-sensory experiences. Experiment with the following techniques and then create more of your own. Use them to build on your current preferences and develop another set of options for learning. So this assignment is basically for your own self to discover where you fall within the VARC system. And like I said, like it says, you may perceive, you may, it may indicate that you prefer learning through one, or you may just find out that your preferences are fairly balanced. And the next set of um, pages here in your textbook shows you different ways to enhance um, the different VARC, through the VARC system. So you can enhance visual learning by doing these things. You can enhance auditory learning by doing the list of these things. So make sure that you go through this when you read your textbook because you want to find out the different ways that you need to improve uh, so you can be a successful student. So back to the PowerPoint. Well, that's it for the PowerPoint. So then let's go to Blackboard so we can discuss the assignments. So this week, this is week two. These are the learning objectives. These are the list of assignments. So first you gotta read the chapter. Under the chapter, I will be posting this pre-recorded video and the quiz along with it. You're gonna see that right under the chapter reading and on top of the written assignment one. You don't see it now because we're currently doing the video. So written assignment one, like I stated earlier, is the multi multiple intelligence online test. The instructions are to take the test as instructed below and submit a screenshot of your results to the Turnitin, to, through the Turnitin link below. This is the link right here, week two, written assignment one. So go to this link. You would copy this right here. And here it is, Personality Max. This is where you would start. As you can see, here are all the different concepts that we were just talking about. So you would start the test. We already have Chrome. I don't know why that's there. See? So obviously I need to update my settings for my Chrome. This would be, if you need to do the same, you would do that. Update wherever it is that you need to update. so you can complete this assignment. So, no, make sure you have enough time to take this entire test. It has 80 questions, but it is on that web page that we just went on. So when you finish using the, um, the snipping tool or screenshot, take a photo of the results. You're gonna paste the image onto an MS Word document and submit it to the Turnitin um, link right here. But you must also answer this question. What did you learn about yourself after taking the test? So you're going to take the test, do the screenshot, copy it onto a Word document, and answer the following question. What did you learn about yourself after taking the test? And then you would submit it right here into this link. So written assignment two, read chapter two, and take the multi, uh, multiple intelligent te test linked below above. So, Use what you learned and based on your own experience, answer the following question in a Word document and submit it through the Turnitin link below. Here's the link right here as well. As you can see, week two, written assignment two. Written assignment two. So this assignment is worth 50 points. So what is your learning style from the multiple intelligent test? Which one of the eight? Uh, what are some of the values and how do you, they connect with your academic plans? Uh, what strategies can you use to enhance the learning process? If you remember, 
right here, enhance, enhance. If we go here, it's right here, the VARG system, it's under the VARG system. Right here, enhance visual learning, auditory, reading and writing. These are all different ways that you can enhance. So make sure that you use the textbook as well to get your information. So what resources are available at ASA College? Well, if you remember from week one, you guys went through the different handbooks, um, and that's where you would find that information, if, which is right here, going through the website, the catalog, and the handbook. What are some strategies for studying different disciplines? Based on what you have learned about learning styles, identify an instructor's teaching style that is different than your learning style and what strategies can be used to support your learning experience. So again, this question asks you to identify one of your instructors teaching a style, styles and um, that is different from your learning style. And so, and what strategies are you gonna be using to help you succeed in that class? And number seven, how does motivation affect your ability to set and reach a goal? Number eight is what are the barriers to succeed to, uh, to success in college? Um, number nine is how can you overcome barriers to success? And last is ask at least one question that you still have this week. That is your second assignment that you will be posting up in here. So like I said, this video will be posted up on week two right now you don't you cannot see week two you're gonna be able to see it on Monday uh, you will watch uh, this by Tuesday and take the quiz and submit it by Tuesday at 11 59 p.m. if you do not submit the quiz I'm gonna have to mark you absent because remember we're not meeting on Tuesdays we're only meeting on Thursdays I made an announcement about this today go to your announcements here it is, the summer 2020 semester weekly agenda. This is the way the semester is going to play out by the week. So I will be posting the video today on Monday or tomorrow's Monday. You will have to watch it during our class time, which is at 9 a.m. And you have until 11.59 p.m. to take the quiz and submit it. And then we'll meet Thursday to discuss any questions that you may have about this uh, pre-recording and any questions that you may have about your assignments and remember that you have the other days to work on your assignments if you do so if you do decide to do so as far as the due dates I'll show you from week one I will be posting the due dates from now on on the heading so it'll say read, written assignment and the due date okay so let's go to week two so a clear picture right now the due dates are not here I will have the due dates up by Monday and you'll see the due dates here and I will also make an announcement with the list of all the assignments and their due dates okay like I did here Last week I made an announcement. I said the lecture quiz was due Friday, May 22nd, and the written assignment resources is due uh, this coming Wednesday by May 27th. Again, if you have any questions about anything, you do not have to wait until Thursday. You can go right here to your instructor, and here's my email, and here's my phone number. It is a Google Voice number, so you can text me, you can call me, or you can email me if you have any questions. So that concludes today's pre-recorded lecture. And again, if you have any questions, contact me. Have a good day.